Hello, lovelies. Okay, right off the bat, I have to address two things before anything else happens in this video. Number one, I was recently sick. It's okay. Thank you for your concern. No big deal. It was just a cold, I think. Although there was like a day where I had six-ish hours of a fever. I don't think that counts as a flu though. Um, and it was basically, it was focused in my sinuses. So it could have been a sinus infection. I don't know. It was, it was basically a cold. I say this to let you know that if you pick up any nasaliness in my voice, that's because I've been sick and it's still lingering. It's not, it's pretty much gone, but not quite yet. I can still hear a little bit of the, that nasal in my head. So if you can hear it too, that's why. And also the other thing that this cold has done is <laughs> kicked my energy right out the window. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> I was so tired and I chose to prioritize myself and doing what I could to still take care of my family over everything else. So no video got made. And the idea that I was planning for this week had to get scrapped because I just, I didn't have any time. I'm filming this now on Wednesday and tomorrow, Thursday is when I want to get the video up. So I'm cutting it really close. And the second thing that I want to address is also another reason why I'm kind of doing a chill video. Because there's a lot of new people here. Welcome. Hello. How are you doing? Looking fantastic. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Okay. When I say there's a lot of people that are new here, let me put this into perspective for you. Cause there's going to be some people who are like, Mina, dude, you're a weenie. That's it's not worth celebrating, but yes. Oh, it is. I opened my YouTube on Sunday and discovered that I had reached 200 subscribers and it's still going up from there. Yes, I said that correct. 200 full stop. Two zero zero. I woohooed. I did a little dance. It still makes me giddy to think about that. And yes, I'm probably a weenie for it. But let me let me put this into perspective for you a little bit here. So I started this channel back in 2014. Now, back in those days, like eight-ish years ago, all you needed were 50 subscribers. I think that's about it. 50 subscribers to get monetized because not many people were doing it back then. I couldn't even crack double digits. I struggled to even get 10 subscribers, let alone 50. And back then, that was sort of the young days of virality. So, you know, it wasn't something that everybody was doing. It was still new and fresh and people wanted to get on board and have that happen to them. And I was one of those people. I wanted it to happen to me. I wanted those numbers. I wanted the popularity. I wanted <gasps> YouTube glory. And it never happened. And I'm okay with that. At first I wasn't, but I've learned to be okay with that. Because if you don't already know, I am a survivor of long time childhood abuse, like 30 plus years. So for most of my life, I had my decisions made for me, my thoughts thought for me, my opinions made for me, my story was told for me. And now that I am finally free of all that, I'm in a position where I can make my own opinions. I can make my own decisions. I can think for myself. I can speak for myself. And having this platform is really therapeutic because even if all I'm doing is talking fluff, I'm still talking my fluff. I'm still putting out the fluff that I want to put out instead of the fluff that I think other people want me to put out or the fluff that I think will get other people's approval. I'm not concerned about any of that anymore. This reframing has both made the numbers game meaningless, but also more valuable. If you get what I'm saying, I don't care so much anymore about 
getting viral. I mean, if I did, that would be awesome. But I, I don't care so much about it anymore. It means more to me that I have these numbers now, not just because of the numbers, but because I value that these numbers are real people. You are real people who like and appreciate what I'm putting out in the world. And you want to see more. You want to support me. And that is fantastic. That is... Thank you. That means so much more to me right now in this point in my life than just the numbers. So 200 to most people might seem like chump change. But to me, that means so much. Within the last like month alone, I've had 30 people who have jumped on board to, you know, come along with me on this journey, whatever it ends up looking like. And I just want to say thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's switch things up a little bit. That that got a little... That was a little more sentimental than I meant to get. Okay. Oh, while we're here in my studio, which... Can you tell I love purple? Yes, it is my favorite color. <laughs> I, I didn't even... I was just... I put this outfit on because I was cold today. I, I didn't even realize that I would like blend in with. Anyway, that's okay. So while we're here, I've done a couple things to change and update some of my miniatures. And since a lot of you have um, joined my journey through my miniature videos, I thought let's, let's do a little bit here and I'll show you what I've done. It's, it's not much, but it's, you know, it's a little something. Okay, first things first over at the miniature display shelf. So as some of you may already know, I've got some little pieces right in there of beach glass. Right there on the table. And right up there and over there. And here in the library, I have already put some pieces of beach glass in my miniatures, but not in all of them. Oh yeah, and I already had a piece right down here. So the other day I was watching a video. I discovered um, a creator by the name of Aira, who runs the YouTube channel Bentley House Minis chef's kiss creations she does a lot of um at least what i've seen spooky uh adam's family beetlejuice shining Ooh, i love it a lot of those kind of miniatures anyway she put a shoe in her diorama and explained that that's her calling card her signature you know the way a artist will sign a painting that's her way of signing her miniatures because you know you can't really sign a miniature the same way that you can sign a painting and i loved that idea and i realized i've already got a bunch of miniatures that i've built that i've snuck little bits of beach glass in why not make that my signature i love beach glass and i always have ever since i was you know a wee little thing i have been searching for and collecting beach glass most of my life. It just made sense. So the other day I went through and gathered up the miniatures that I had that don't currently have or didn't currently have beach glass in them and I put beach glass in them. So if you've seen the video with my chocolate box haunted dollhouse, there's a little piece where about I've put a little piece of beach glass up there on the shelf. In my Christmas room in a jewelry box. Let's see if this helps. I've put a little piece right over back there on the hearth in my world's smallest Barbie doll house. I've got a little piece right there. And I don't know if you can tell, but that little piece of glass I chose because it kind of looked to me like a giraffe. So like a giraffe 
sculpture or a toy or something. I don't know, I just thought that was kind of cool. Now originally I thought this already had beachy stuff because I put the stones and ceramic. But I thought, no, this one needs some glass too. So I put a little piece right here beside the tree. It kind of looks like a teeny tiny little lime green tree. It kind of blends in, but it also kind of stands out, which I thought was cool. I recently made a couple of those changes that I mentioned wanting to make to my tiny personal library. I mentioned that in the previous video where I did the tour of, the, of these. Okay, so the first thing I did was make this chair. That chair is basically made with spare wood from other miniatures, uh, cardboard from cereal box, and I don't know what this stuff is called. It's like styrofoam, but it's not. It's more plasticky and it doesn't like shred and create like that little snow effect like styrofoam does. It doesn't make the mess everywhere, but it's still nice and squishy. So I used this for the seat cushion and to bulk up the arms a little bit. So it would look kind of plush. This doll, what I have done is I found that she was too big. She was just a little bit too tall. So I chopped off her ankles, took some height out of there and then glued her feet back on, chopped a chunk out of her thigh and glued that back on. I don't trust the glue on the thigh, so I've wrapped it in duct tape. And then, of course, because the duct tape is kind of hideous, I made her a half circle skirt. Kind of full, but not too full. I think that looks quite cute with her jacket and top. It sort of matches and looks like a cohesive outfit. So I think that's cool. And I finished her alteration surgery before I started working on the chair to make sure that the chair was made to her specifications so that she would fit properly and look comfortable. So when I sit her in the chair, she can sit back, her feet touch the floor, her arms hit the armrest. So I think that turned out really, really awesome. And then this other piece is the other chair that I made, similarly with a uh, cereal box card, leftover wood, and that plastic styrofoam stuff for the cushions. I also used some little pieces of dowel on the arms and the back to get these like rolls. And I used the feet from the pink chair that originally came with this kit. And I added some pony beads just to give it a little more height so it was more equal to the purple chair. Again, to the doll's specifications, this chair was made. Sound like Yoda, I do. This chair was upholstered in this black, I'm not sure if it's velvet or a velveteen. It used to be a skirt. It was cut off from a hem that I did. But I like how these two chairs look quite plush and they just fit into the vibe of the library. So as I mentioned earlier, I have a bunch of new subscribers and I am so very grateful for each and every one of you. And I just wanted to take this opportunity in this video to do a formal, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. In case you don't know, my name is Mina. So for everybody who discovered my videos because of my recent minis videos, you're very, very welcome here. There will continue to be miniature content on this channel of that I can guarantee. So you're definitely in the right spot if you like miniatures. I also hope that you are open to seeing other things though, because I personally do not like a niche. I find them stifling and boring and yeah, I've mentioned it before on this channel. I'll try not to mention it too many times, but I'm not monetized here. I am in a very privileged position where I don't need to make this my career. This is a passion project and a passion project only. So if I don't feel inspired and motivated to create content, then there will be no content. 
So it's got to be stuff that I like too. And as much as I like miniatures, if that's all I'm pumping out, it's going to feel like a job and I just, I don't want that. Also, something that I used to film more frequently on this channel, because it was sort of what was going on when I started, were toy unboxings, mystery unboxings, and that was fun. Don't get me wrong. I loved doing that. It's just, then I was left with a bunch of things that I had to find places for and stuff in general is, that's a, that's a cause for anxiety for me. If it's something that I love, like my miniatures, these are my babies. It's, that's my art. And I enjoy the whole process, the sourcing the materials or finding the kits, building things, customizing, you know, messing around with them and taking photos and stuff after the fact. So finding places for those things, very easy to do and I'm happy to do it. It's just that if I get too many of them, then they'll start being pieces that I don't want to keep. And then what do I do with them? It was like the unboxing. As awesome as some of the things were in those mystery boxes, there were some things that I didn't like. And then I was, I had the dilemma of, well, now what do I do with it? Where do I put it? How do I dispose of it? And that's, I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to be switching things up, but not doing anything too different. A lot of the videos that currently exist on this channel will continue going forward. So if you have found me for my miniatures, I highly, enthusiastically encourage and invite you to check out some of my other videos, because that's some of the other things we've got going. Uh, some of the other videos that I do here and will continue to do will be sewing and costume related content. So making things, uh, I might show you the process or we'll just have a, a casual chat while I sew things. I love cosplay. I love costuming. I love making things, clearly. And sometimes I need an excuse or a reason. Conventions are fantastic. However, I'm in a small city. We don't really have that much near me that I can do. It can get expensive to travel. So if I saved all my cosplays for something, for an event, for a party, it would never happen. But that's where videos come in, because if I can document the process and share it with you fine folks, that keeps me accountable and gives me something to work for, a reason to finish the costume. Some of the other videos that I have done and will continue to do are my Fab or Fail series. If you're not familiar with that, that's where I test things, whether they be uh, recipes, sewing patterns, just random internet trends, things that I have found, you know, online, in print, maybe it's a you know newspaper or magazine or on TV or whatever. And most of the time, the things that I would like to try or what started the whole series off is seeing people who have large amounts of resources, whether it be like personnel, finances, that kind of thing. And they're able to make these things work. And it got me wondering, hmm, but would it really, if someone like me with limited resources, with no one else to help, would it really work? And I've had a lot of fun with those videos in the past. I have a whole playlist. I'll link that down below, my fab or fail playlist. I highly... Uh, recommend that you go and check that out. I think it's a hoot and a half. Uh, candy kits. Candy kits were one of the first videos that I ever created on this channel as well. And I love them because, I mean, food, it's fantastic. And also tiny food. So it kind of miniatures. It's miniature-esque. I don't find many candy kits though lately. There's been a pretty stagnant pause between, you know, now in the last video. Again, small town, limited resources. I can order and get uh, candy kits posted to me. However, even that way, uh, the it's limited. I, I don't know if it's because the trend is dying or what, but I'm finding a lot of the same kits that I've 
already tried and not much new. Now, that said, <laughs> I have found a couple new kits. And that leads into what we have to look forward to. We're going to shoot for a video every other week. With one week off in between. And yeah, I think that'll be a pace that I can maintain. And my current upload schedule is Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to continue doing that because right now that works for me. At least for now. I don't know how long this is going to last because not all of the videos will fit in this strategy. But for now, in the immediate future, what I'm planning are like a theme. Next month for February, I also like a good alliteration. <laughs> so in February, I'm going to be doing a foodie February. I'm, the two videos that I'm going to share in February will be food related. As I mentioned, I did find a candy kit or two. And then in March, the two videos that I've got planned for that make me really excited. And I've pushed it to March because I need time to source my materials and get things started. And the filming is going to be, I think, a bit of a bulk because I'm going to be doing a, maybe not so much a tutorial as a make along with me. Uh, okay. So the, the Barbie doll sized one sixth scale dollhouse room that I had made and that my daughter has subsequently taken and run with. I need a new one. And I've come across a couple of videos with techniques that I really want to try to put together a really epic room. So I'm planning on doing that in March. And the reason I chose March is partly because, like I said, I can push it off, gather my supplies, figure things out, get the filming started. But also because March turns out to be Barbie's birth month. And it's a Barbie doll size room. See where I'm going? So I'm planning two videos for that because I think it's going to be a big project and probably a two-parter. And then I don't know what I'm doing after that. <laughs> But that's okay. April's months away. We'll figure it out when we get there. So some miniature content, some non-miniature content, but it's all going to be fun. And okay, maybe not. I should mention as well, there are some videos on this channel that are maybe a little heavier if you've come looking for a good time. And I just want to give you a heads up that that's also a possibility. Mental illness is a big part of who I am. I struggle with a lot of trauma related stuff. So mental health will still be something that I talk about. I would love to know who it is that I'm talking to. So if you feel comfortable, if you are so inclined, please pop down to the comments below and let me know um, who you are, whatever name you feel comfortable sharing, you know, publicly on the internet. It doesn't have to be your real name. You can use a code name, a nickname, whatever, but let me know, you know, who you are and where you're, where you are. Um, again, not specifically, please be safe. It's just, I got a comment uh, a couple days ago from someone from Spain, which that is awesome. Love to Spain from Canada. So, you know, generally if you're in a different, if you're from Canada, Hey, hello. I'm also from Canada. Nice to see a neighbor. And if you're from somewhere else, let me know that too. Again, generally, not specifically, stay safe. And let me know as well, what are your passion projects? Do you also like making miniatures? Do you like cooking? Are you also a sewist? Do you like something else that I have not tried? I like to dabble in all sorts of things. So who knows, maybe you'll give me inspiration to try something else. <laughs> so yeah, let me know, you know, in the comments. Let's, let's get a little conversation and a dialogue going. I think that would be really cool. Okay, I think I've rambled enough. Thank you very much, lovelies. I appreciate having you on this journey with me. Yeah, that's, that's it for this video. I will see you in February for Foodie February. I hope to see you there. Until then, stay safe, stay fabulous. Take care, lovelies. Love you. Bye.